Hannah Moody is a psychology major from Seward, Nebraska. So good morning and welcome to I'm Not a Dog So Please Don't Whistle, implementing a public service campaign to fight the negative effects of street harassment. My name is Hannah Moody and I completed this research and this PSA with my group members, Dale Ahrens, Jessica Voorhees, Mark Uswell, and Joe Brown, none of whom who could be here today. So I'll be tackling it uh, by myself. We conducted this PSA under the direction of Dr. Jessica Henry for persuasive communication. So I'd real quick just like to give a huge thank you to her. Without her, this project would not be at the level that it is. I'd also like to give a thank you to Dr. John Perlick for putting in his time to help me edit and take this project to the national level now. So what is street harassment? Let's just begin simply with the definition. However, in front of you are name tags that were used during our actual campaign. So it's the stickers in front of you. I'd like to invite you to fill out something in the blank that you have been called, something that you may have called, something that you may have heard called, any kind of name, word, phrase, and I'd invite you to wear it for the rest of this presentation and for the rest of the day as just like another mini campaign um, from our project. So feel free to do that at any point in the presentation. Um, it doesn't bother me at all if you guys focus on that. So to start with, what is street harassment in 2016 defined it as unwanted comments, gestures, and actions forced on a stranger in a public place without their consent due to their perceived sex, gender expression, or sexual orientation. So what to expect today? We'll begin with covering an analysis of the issue discussing the prevalence, sources, and effects of street harassment. Next, we'll move on to our campaign that we actually implemented here at Hastings College. And finally, an assessment of our campaign. So we'll talk about the analysis of the issue. And I'll make this brief, because no one likes a long lit review. So, <laughs> so first, uh, we kind of covered five main sources that kind of looked at street harassment. Uh, we used What is Street Harassment 2016? Stop Street Harassment 2016. Research conducted by Davidson, Butchko, Robin, Shirt, and Jervis in 2016, Santhanum in 2014, and finally the Hollaback Foundation and Cornell University in 2014. So according to the organization Stop Street Harassment in 2016, in a survey of 811 participants, 99 reported that they had previously experienced street harassment. This is not a rare number. It tends to be very high. In fact, in a separate survey conducted by Davidson and colleagues in 2016, they found that 88% had experienced street harassment as well. 33 reported that the incident was sexual in nature. And the most common forms of these are whistling, leering, sexist comments. However, 37 of the participants reported that they had experienced severe harassment, which includes blocking paths sexual touching, and masturbation in front of them. So finally, we'll go on to the sources of street harassment. Santhanum in 2014 claimed that there were three primary reasons that street harassment occurs. He talked about pop culture, a reluctance to intervene, and finally, a lack of education. So first, we'll just quick do a sentence or two on each one, so pop culture. In today's cultures, Men are taught that they have permission to view women as sexually available and believe that women should be sexually available to them at all times. Finally, another reason, a reluctance to intervene. Um, in a survey conducted by St. Thanum, 
60% of participants, including men and women, reported that they did not want to intervene when they saw street harassment or any form of harassment, and this was due to a fear and escalation of the situation. Next, uh, lack of education. With topics such as these, we are socialized through media and don't get formal education on these topics, teaching women and other uh, victims how to deal with this kind of harassment, as well as teaching perpetrators that it's not okay and it does have negative effects. So we'll move on to the effects. These can be categorized in two um, distinct categories. We have psychological distress and forced lifestyle changes. People believe that street harassment is innocent. They believe you, they are giving a compliment to the person they are harassing, but this is actually not the case. Davidson and colleagues found that there's actually a strong correlation between perceptions of safety and anxiety in college women and harassment that they encounter. Forced lifestyle changes is actually quite common with people who experience harassment on a daily basis. 50% of, of 16,000 participants to stop street harassment in 2016 said that they had consciously changed their clothes, refused a social event, or were completely distracted at work out of fear of harassment. 40% had admitted that they avoided public places in general, and 19% reported that they had actually moved cities to avoid harassment. So now we'll move on to the more fun stuff. Um, the campaign we actually implemented here at Hastings College last spring semester. So our overall goal was to increase knowledge on the effects of street harassment, to increase awareness of street harassment, and finally decrease the amount of street harassment occurring on our campus. We did this through um, a various means of strategies. We used a target audience, surveys, social media, logo, slogans, <coughs> name tags, public service announcements, and a pledge. So our first small group was to increase men's overall awareness of street harassment and the behaviors that this might entail. We measured this through pre-tests and post-test surveys, as well as social media interactions. So to begin with, we're actually going to stay on this slide and talk about our target audience. We focused mainly on men from ages 18 to 25. We chose this group because men tend to be more likely to perpetrate street harassment Men in this age range are more likely to perpetrate street harassment, and men tend not to realize the negative effects it can have. So, um, and to back up our reasoning for this, out of all of the research we found, on average, 65% of women reported that they had experienced street harassment, with 70% of those numbers saying men were the perpetrator of their harassment. So uh, we did implement a survey. It included a short demographic session, section as well as 13 questions regarding um, the knowledge we wanted to assess. Our goal was to raise knowledge by 10%, and we would see this by a one point Likert increase. Uh, so questions one, four, and five focus on the assessment of this knowledge, with question one specifically targeting the definition of street harassment. Four and five were situation-based to see if our participants were able to recognize street harassment when it was occurring. And questions two and three focus on the prevalence of street harassment. For our pre-survey, we had 72 participants. We implemented our campaign for one week and then chose 72 new participants to take our post-survey. We chose 72 new participants in our post-survey in order to prevent a skew in data. Uh, we attempted, rightfully or wrongfully, to prevent an influence of the pre-survey on post-survey answers, so that's why we chose uh, completely new participants after our campaign was over. So next we focused on social media. We utilized Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. This is a screenshot from my personal page um, of Instagram during the actual campaign of me advertising for our um, events. So our goal was to get 300 shares, likes, downloads, tweets, or views through all of our social media. And we posted pictures of our posters, a video PSA, we did selfies and competitions. So next we had a logo, slogan, and name tag. Our logo is the name tag that you guys were given today, as you can see also up on the screen. Um, the typical hello my name is name tag, but we added a slight twist to it and had uh, the word not stamped on, uh, on it. And we encouraged, like I encourage you guys to do today, to write in something that is not your name, but something that you have been called or have called to someone. We also chose um, the slogan, worth more than your cat calls, 
to encourage women to value their worth more, as well as to teach perpetrators that they should maybe not value a person based on their outward appearance. Um, and the name tag event, uh, like I asked you to do today, we had um, students around campus wear them, take a selfie with them, and they were entered for a gift card and raffles. So next, we also had PSAs. We had a television ad and posters. So our television ad was one minute in length, and it focused on what street harassment looks like, the effects it has, as well as persuading viewers um, to not be a bystander and to end street harassment. Uh, Eunice so generously donated her skills and talents for us and read a slam poem. Uh, we did encounter a lot of problems at this point in our campaign, and it just went to show us how it actually does happen on our campus, how people view women and other minority groups as less. We actually received quite a few text messages from angry students telling us that our problem was not here on campus, it was not relevant, and if we wanted to gain attention, we needed to use a white woman. So uh, this was the point in the campaign that we really saw on our campus that this was an issue. This was something that needed to be done on campus. So we also used a poster which included examples of catcalling, street harassment, and other phrases. It included an emotional visual, visual of how it feels inwardly when you hear these things, as well as providing a call of action at the bottom. We posted these in high traffic areas all across campus, and one still hangs in the uh, Doherty Center. So there is one still up on campus that I've seen. Next, we also had a pledge. Uh, it was an invitation to write on change.org, pretty much stating that you will not be a bystander when you see street harassment. You will not perpetuate street harassment. Our goal was to get 100 signatures. So next, we'll go to our results and the assessment of our campaign strategies. First, I'd like to point out again that this was just a pilot campaign. It was something we wanted to look to see if it would succeed at the national level. So we chose a small Midwestern liberal arts college, so um, that could also have an effect on how our results came across. So first, an increased awareness of street harassment. So we looked at this from our survey. Uh, our goal was to have a one point Likert scale increase, or 10%, in questions one through three. Uh, questions one and two both met that goal with question one, 10.8%. Question two, 16.3%. Mm -hmm. Question three also had a rise, not as strongly as we would have liked to see, but it was only 3.7, but still an increase. Questions four and five were situation-based, and again, the goal was to see a rise in 10%. Question four rose 20.7%, and question five rose 16.9%. So next, we wanted to look at increased knowledge about the damaging effects Questions six through 10 on our survey included this, and once again, we wanted to see a 10% increase. Uh, we actually, through this section, for the first question on our survey, we actually saw an opposite reaction to what we wanted. So questions six, seven, and eight were all increases like we wanted, so was question 10. However, question nine decreased by 10%, so the opposite effect of what we wanted. Question nine read, some men explicitly intend to hurt or anger their victims through street harassment. True or false? The correct answer was true, and we had 10% more answers say that it was actually false. So um, that was the only question after in our post survey that saw the opposite um, reaction we wanted. Next was the decreased amount of street harassment occurring. So this was question 12 and 13 on our survey. Um, and it talked about the likelihood that the uh, participant would commit um, street harassment on a day-to-day -day basis. These questions were reverse scored, so we actually wanted a positive increase. And so question 12 and 13 both got those, with question 12 being 2.7 and 13 being 5.6. So next and finally in our assessment, we looked at social media. The goal was to reach 300 impressions overall. Within three tweets from one personal account of our members, we had raised 2,500 interactions, and in total, at the end of the week, we had reached 11,546 impressions, and they were still growing by the time our campaign was over for the next week. So that was hugely exciting. Um, at the end of our campaign, we talked about if this were to go national, and we talked about focusing more on anticipating responses we had not anticipated um, the strongly negative reactions we had gotten to certain aspects of our campaign. So that was pretty 
surprising and we'd like to focus more on reactions. Um, posters should be reconsidered. We didn't have a lot of interaction with those. Um, social media tended to be our big point, so we wanted to focus on enhancing those interactions. And so I'm gonna finally end with, does anyone have any questions about our campaign? So. Yeah, when we first got those reactions, uh, most of them uh, were received um, to Joe Brown. Um, he was probably the most involved male in our group on our campus, so he tended to get most of the male reactions. We were not prepared in any way for that. We expected some reactions, but not something that strongly. So we held an emergency group meeting right away and decided to brainstorm some important statistics and facts to kind of reiterate our point of it does happen, it does have negative effects, and we decided as a group to, if we got negative responses, just to reiterate our point and say, like, we're not trying to force you to believe, but statistics don't lie usually, so. So. What do you yes. speculate was the, the reason that question number nine went down? Went down. We, talked about that. We weren't 100% sure because we didn't do any follow-up questions or surveys or personal interviews with the participants. Uh, we kind of brainstormed. My guess would be due to the strong negative reactions we had to certain parts of our campaign, uh, the participants who took our survey had interacted with it somehow and became defensive and wanted to defend themselves saying it wasn't something they intent, like they weren't purposefully trying to do this. So that would be our personal guess, but it would be something we'd want to go further on in further research to look at. Yes, Dr. Burr? I'm curious if you can go back to your survey. I'm curious about the other questions that those, the change did go in the direction that you were you predicted, and then what mine looks like. So it was six, seven, eight? Yes. So those all went in the predicted direction. So yep, six, seven, eight, and 10 all went in the direction we predicted or wanted and question nine um, went in the opposite direction. So did you separate out men and women from the responses to that? Maybe that might, yeah, that might. Um, we only had male participants. Oh, only males. Oh, mm -hmm. So what I'm wondering is your focus in your campaign, especially that poster with the female with her head down, mm -hmm. some of the things that were said, I think with your focus being on the victim and some of the things that are said like smile, um, so maybe that actually kind of increased their thinking about this issue of I'm not trying to hurt your, like I'm trying to give you a call. Yeah. And so I think that your focus in your campaign was, you know, like I'm not trying to make this person feel this way. I actually believe that I'm doing something positive and so maybe that increased that reaction to that question. Yeah, when we finished our project and did more um, looking at responses, we realized we kind of had a conflict in what direction we were going. Um, surveys focused on the perpetrators, but a lot of our events and things focused on victims. Mm -hmm. So that was one thing we talked about if we wanted to do something more national was maybe gear it all in one direction mm -hmm. and not kind of have conflicting interests mm -hmm. in I the campaign. That's a really good way to maybe tease that so. is if you're focusing on, yeah, but anyway, that might be an explanation for that, again, yeah, speculation, but. Yes? So do you attend Um, it was something we were considering. Um, this project uh, is submitted to a national conference for next year, so we'll see if it gets accepted. So that would be something we might want to look at tailoring a little more before we get to that conference. Um, it was just a pilot for a class, so um, a couple of my group members don't want to pursue it further, so it also just kind of depends if we have enough people to work on completing this, but it's something I would like to pursue. So, yes? Did you try to specifically look into marginalized groups and see if that might influence your results? We did not go hugely into depth in that. Uh, this was just a very broad overview, nothing too in depth. 
So that was another thing we wanted to focus more on. And we primarily focused on women. So we'd kind of want to focus more on other minority groups as well who receive this kind of harassment. So anyone have any other further questions? All right, thank you.